up to quite recently, we were, we were one of the highest yielding um, gold dividend sh shares in the world. And that's where we'd like to get back to. And I think uh, the operating environment in terms of the robustness of our assets and the performance and then also the gold price should assist us in, in, in resuming, uh, resuming even more attractive dividends in the, in, the, in the future. We've guided that we would anticipate the all-in sustaining cost of this pillar project to be below $1,000, which is very attractive. Hello and welcome to Crux Ambassador. We spoke earlier today to Cobus Lutz, the CEO of Pan-African Resources. They're a South African gold producer. They're well on their way to becoming a mid-tier producer, targeting 185,000 ounces at the end of this financial year. Cobus released their operational update a few weeks ago. We get them to run us through the highs and lows of the last six months. Obviously mining is mining, but these guys consistently find a way of getting things done. Take a look in the description below to see some of the topics we discussed. You can click on the relevant timestamp. That'll take you to that part of the video. And of course, I could ask if you click the button in the corner of the screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to see more videos like this, click the notification bell. Let's hear what Cobus had to say. Hello, Cobus. How are you, sir? Very good. Thank you for having me. Well, Happy New Year. I haven't spoken to you since before Christmas. So uh, how are you? How's it Thanks, been? Matthew. We're good. And um, we've been busy, as you might have seen from the operational update. Well, we have. That, that, that's, why, that's why we called you. Um, it seems like a, a good last six months. You're on target to hit 185,000 ounces. That puts you very much in, a, in the mid-cap uh, territory for sure. You, you pleased with your performance? Yeah, we uh, we believe we uh, sort of certainly the performance for the first six months provides a solid base for us to have a very good financial year. So, um, Elekulu performed very well. Um, so sort of we produced almost uh, thirty thousand ounces. We're well positioned now, actually, in the next next six months to increase that to 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 go to almost sixty five thousand ounces for the full year. So that was a great performance. Uh, Barberton uh, was down slightly, mostly as a result of underground. Um, but we have more flexibility now, so we expect a much better six months um, going forward from Barberton. And then also, I think, which is very, what, what is very positive is the uh, work that we've done in the Evanda H of Pillar. So, I mean, this project has gone from uh, being a liability um, to actually now being poised to generate very attractive cash flows going forward for the next three years. Okay, so if you don't mind, can we just kind of break down that 185,000 ounces that you're going to be producing? So you've got your, exist, your existing, um, uh, you know, Bar Barberton and Elikulu, both on the on the tailings and the mining front. Um, you and they're they're going as planned. The numbers are as targeted. First of all, yeah. Well, sort of. Let's say, I mean, it started with Elikulu, which we commissioned last year. Yeah, it's a world class project. It was 130 million dollars that we uh, put into the ground. It retreats old uh, historic mine tailings. Um, it has a life of 12 years at present, and it's producing um, at an all-in sustaining cost of $650 per ounce or below. And I think what's more is that we are cleaning up legacy liability, so it ticks the box in terms of um, ESG, uh, uh, sort of looking after the environment, etc. So that's a great project. It's incredibly safe. We don't have as many employees as what we would have underground. So um, we're very happy with the performance at Elikulu. And as I've said, we actually expect Elikulu to do even better in the next six months. Um, and then the Barberton Complex, which is also a, a world-class tailings business, the BTRP, we do about 20,000 ounces from the BTRP at Barberton and then 80,000 odd ounces from underground. So that gives us another 100,000 ounces circa a year from Barberton. And then, uh, as I said, the pillar, which is the project that we are commissioning at the moment uh, at Evander. That'll give us 20 odd thousand. And that sort of 20 actually then becomes 30 a thousand ounces and more in the years ahead. Okay. And you, you actually referred to it there as a former liability. Why was that? Well, um, sort of when we curtailed operations at H shaft, so we were mining 24 level, which is uh, very deep with uh, uh, and a lot of infrastructure, a lot of logistics huge a number of employees so um you know we could tell that business about uh, two years ago we actually shut it down and then the sort of question arose what do we do with uh, the remaining resource we could have quite simply terminated operations at h shaft um and that would have been the end instead we said well let's have a look at this pillar project uh, let's see how what sort of gold we can get out um and uh, over what sort of a time frame and at what margin importantly 
and that's how the HR pillar project has happened. Right. So it was basically it was costing a lot of money to get gold out of the ground. It's going less and less profitable, having sunk obviously a lot of money into the ground there as well. So you're now mining more economically as a result. Is that that's the point of what you've well, done? Well, we've we've we 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 are ceasing operations at the bottom levels, which are very expensive, and we are actually starting mining right uh, at yeah. the at the shaft. Yeah. So, um, you know, we've guided that we would anticipate the all in sustaining cost of this pillar project to be below a thousand dollars, which is very attractive. And that's in line with the rest of our operations. OK. And Kobus, can I just ask you about uh, Egoli? Because obviously you talked about the the MFS, the, the, the mine feasibility study has been finalized now. Where, where are you at with that? What should we be excited about? So yes, I mean, it's a very um, interesting project from our perspective. Uh, as you said, the mining feasibility study has been done. We're actually having the study uh, independently vetted by a third party and then expanding it to a full feasibility study, the results of which will be available um, pretty much at the same time as our interim uh, financial uh, results. Right. Um, and uh, yes, I mean, it's circa 90 or 1,000 ounces a year. Initially, a life of mine, uh, nine years, but um, you know, if we uh, model further resources, it's anywhere from 15 to 20 years, at a fairly limited capital uh, number for a project of this nature. Right. Because of the fact that we're utilizing existing infrastructure mostly, there's a uh, processing plant that's operational on surface. We have the vertical shaft that's all done. Um, the returns uh, certainly um, currently, uh, in terms of even a conservative gold price, appear to be attractive. So I think, you know, watch the space um, in terms of Egoli uh, and our next steps uh, when we uh, when we release our interim res results. Okay, I and mean, when, when does that actually, how does that ramp up? How quickly does it ramp up? So, um, you know, we sort of, in the pro we haven't yet pushed the button on, on development. Mm. Uh, the key is to finalize funding. And what we have said to shareholders is that we will not uh, not do the funding in any way that is dilutive. So we, you know, looking at potentially uh, bringing in a stream or an equity investor sorts. Um, certainly, the project has debt capacity in our view, also. So, um, so you know, once the once we're happy with the feasibility study and the fact that we can manage the risks, yeah, and that it's a project that we need to be doing um, uh, from a from a uh, pipeline perspective, um, yeah. you know, we'll finalize the funding and then we'll certainly have a. Time frame in terms so what, of so what, right so the, the the timing is not imminent because when i asked you earlier about are you have you plans for debt for this year you said no so this is not a 2020 debt solution you're saying that will come after that that's right well, well um sort of the, the ramp up period is three years um and the most of the capital spent in the, in the later years and if we uh potentially look to get in an equity investor or some other form of finance then that sort of takes off the burden uh, um, certainly from ourselves. But in terms of the existing operations, um, certainly what we've said in terms of debt, that, that holds true. So we're not going to look to gear up the uh, the existing operations to fund a project like this. We think so it'll stand on its own two feet. Okay. So the you've been looking at the A second, looking at ways of reducing the ASA. I mean, it's, I guess it's fairly standard this the getting somewhere between 950 and a thousand dollars us dollars is where you want to be especially in today's gold price so you you must you're obviously throwing a lot off, off a lot more cash but you've also had to finance a lot of the development work with debt so I mean, what is the position on that at the moment well um uh, for six months uh, to december we've managed to de-gear the balance sheets and we've guided that in the year ahead we should see a dramatic uh, decrease in our uh, gearing levels um, you know that's a, uh, a product of uh, the pillar now being into uh, coming into production. So we'll be steady state in the pillar in March. It's the product of Ilakulu performing at steady state and uh, of the uh, operations at Barberton performing. And then certainly what's helping us also is the uh, the gold price, both in dollar terms and then even more so in South African rand, which is the currency that we look at. Yeah. Okay. So. If I may just touch upon this here, a lot of mid cap companies and large companies, they tend to borrow money, and plow it back into the ground, and they kind of forget about shareholders. You issued your first dividend for a couple of years recently. What are your plans for keeping that going? Are you going to give back to well, the long holding shareholders uh, in your company, or is it the plan just to reinvest into the ground? Well, I mean, uh, so if you look at our sort of uh, 
priorities in terms of how we apply capital. Uh, we need to continue to invest in our assets, um, but in the past we managed to do so, and then also pay an attractive dividend. Um, you know, uh, certainly up to quite recently we were, we were one of the highest yielding um, gold dividend sh shares in the world, and that's where we'd like to get back to. And I think. Uh, the operating environment in terms of the robustness of our assets and the performance and then also the gold price should assist us in, in, in resuming, uh, resuming even more attractive dividends in the, in the, in the future. Clearly, we have uh, still some of the debt that we uh, took on to fund Ilekulu that's still on the balance sheet. But as I said, uh, we anticipate that number in terms of the gearing levels to come down quite dramatically in the year ahead. Any more, any more plans for any more debt? Well, no, I mean, there's no need for us to incur any more debt. Um, also, if you look at the sort of projects we undertake now, we uh, one obviously looks at all of the, the return metrics, including internal rate of return, MPV, etc. But um, payback is also very important for us. So, you know, how, how long does it take us to get our money back? And that's where projects like an Elikulu is so attractive, where originally we were, we were forecasting a payback of four years on, a, on 130 odd million dollars. Um, and at this gold price, I actually expect the payback to be sooner. So those are the sort of projects we'd like to do. But again, I just trying to understand the thinking of the management team here, because you've got options of you know paying it back in four years or paying it back quicker, paying dividends. You know, you, you've got the choice of what you do with that money, okay? So some companies like to be completely debt free as quickly as possible others like to maintain some kind of leverage and utilize that spare cash elsewhere to develop and grow the business i mean where's your head at well look i mean uh, our view is that mining companies should not be over geared and they should have a conservative level of debt and that's really where i think we will end up in the sort of next six months or so uh, it also doesn't make sense for us to have no debt in our view it's not efficient from a capital uh, allocation perspective. So, um, you know, we think that we can repay significant, uh, pretty much sort of all of our debt in the next 12 to 18 months and then resume dividends. So the one is not at the expense of the other. Okay. So dividends, they're, they're still in the pipeline. People, your shareholders will still be receiving dividends as you continue to develop the business and grow and grow the business. Perfect. Can we talk about something else, though? You know, you you did highlight them. I mean, you, you I, would, I would give you credit for this. You you don't shirk or or hide uh, from this. You've talked about a couple of things. There's been some community issues which has affected productivity, and also more recently some power issues. I mean, I know mining is mining and it's tough, but what has gone on there, and will that reoccur? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think we have a demonstrated ability to operate successfully in South Africa. Um, we have had community uh, unrest and that's affected, as you pointed out, to the Barberton operations in the last six months. Mm. Um, we had uh, very serious power issues with ESCOM, our uh, South African power utility in December. On top of it, we also had probably the wettest uh, December in terms of rainfall okay. that I can recall for the last 20 years. So that also affected operations. So, you know, bottom line is I think one has to plan to have some level of disruption to your operations and you have to have robust assets that can withstand these sort of issues uh, and a management team that's proactive and anticipate when they can uh, and then deal accordingly. So, uh, yes, I mean, South Africa uh, gets quite a bit quite a lot of bad press, I think, in terms of the operating environment. And a lot of it is justified. But then, as you've said, um, you know, most mining jurisdictions have their issues. No, they, 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 they do. Like I say, I, you know, I give you credit for not shirking away from it or ignoring it. But, you know, ESCOM, for instance, I mean, what was the issue? Is it going to reoccur? Because I look at, again, information that you provided, you know, the price, their prices have been going up and up, so which affects your margins. But how do you engage with them? How do you have conversations that gives you some sort of certainty about what the future looks like? Sure. Well, uh, ESCOM uh, has been more of an issue at our Evander underground business. Um, and fortunately there, we have spare capacity. So, um, you know, we can afford to turn off a, a mill for a couple of hours if there's what is termed load shedding. So where the grid is overloaded. So, I mean, we do have that, uh, that capacity, but I, I think what you, and I think also uh, the ESCOM situation is not going to um, become any easier overnight. We will continue to have power shortages in South Africa, probably for at least the, the, the next two years. Barberton uh, Mines is less energy uh, intensive, so it's less affected. Elikulu doesn't use a lot of electricity, so that's less affected. 
Um, uh, but and unfortunately, as I've said, uh, at Evander Underground, we have some spare uh, capacity. We can so we can afford to reduce our power consumption for a limited period. And recently, the uh, the Minister of, of of Mines in South Africa has has come out to say that they are uh, in a process now of deregulating uh, the let's call it power uh, uh, private power generation. Um, at Evander, we're actually uh, completing a bankable feasibility study into mm. a solar plant that will be able to look after pretty much all of Elekulu during the daytime. Mm. And uh, we expect that we'd be able to, uh, over time, expand that project also. So uh, miners are being creative about defining solutions. And I think over the medium to longer term, we'll, we'll get those solutions implemented in a way that actually makes sense for shareholders. Interesting. You should talk to your buddies up the road at Bushveld by the sounds of it. But they're exactly. Very- <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. um, okay. Well, th- th- thanks for that update. It, it, look, it just sounds like business as usual for you. Obviously, I, I appreciate you being, you know, quite direct about you know some of the issues that you miners face. But you, you're consistently hitting the numbers or exceeding the numbers, uh, despite those problems. So you always find a way. So, um, do you stay in touch? Let us know how you get on. What are the, what are the next big things that we should be looking out for? Well, we have our interim results uh, now um, being released next week on the 18th of February, mm-hmm. and uh, that'll contain more detail on uh, the performance and what we expect for the remainder of the year. And um, yeah, as I, as we've said, we're quite positive. We have a, we've laid a solid foundation, a good base to perform well. And um, so the rand uh, gold price or the gold price in rand terms is sort of pretty much the highest that it's ever been. So you know that's a good environment for us to operate in also. And you, you see that continuing, do you? Well, uh, we sort of try and uh, uh, focus on those issues we can control, um, yeah. but it's always nice to have tailwinds, like the gold price. Light, light a candle, for sure. Okay, Thank Thanks again. Speak to you real soon. Thanks, Matthew. Chat soon.